Hey, Tom Casey here today talking to you about ductwork, specifically branch ductwork and even more specifically round ductwork that feeds your branches. So what is a branch? A branch is a duct run that comes from the system and then will feed a room in a supply or be a return from the room back to the main trunk for the return duct. So branches are supplies or returns and they're sort of like the, the, uh, the veins and all the blood vessels for your duct system to get air to all the individual rooms. So why are we talking about that today? Well, we're talking about that today because there seems to be a lot of confusion related to the size of the branches required in order to properly cool and or heat your space. And so the size of the branch, as you can imagine, equates to how much air will flow to it. And the air flowing to it equates to how much heating or cooling will take place within the room. So if you have not enough air, then you won't have enough heating or cooling. If you have too much air, then you have too much heating or cooling. And so you wanna be like Goldilocks, not too much, not too little, but just right. So one of the things that's really critical about this for you to know is that the ducts or the branches have to be sized properly. And to do this, we use things called air duct calculators, sometimes referred to as ductulators. And they're slide rule type things like pictured here on the screen, or there are also computer programs and different types of charts and stuff. But what's really, really important for you to know is there's a lot of confusion over what chart to use. You see, there's different kinds of ductwork. Today, we're just going to limit ourselves to two types of ductwork that are in branches, metal and flexible. So the top ductulator, which is green and white, as you can see here, is a sheet metal ductulator intended for sheet metal pipes. And the bottom ductulator is a flexible duct calculator intended for flexible ducts. And what I want to illustrate to you today is if we dial in the round duct diameter here at 10 inches for the metal and 10 inches for the flex, we can look at a friction rate or the pressure loss a duct has and determine how much air can flow. So in this case, a 0 0.10 friction rate has 400 cubic feet of air or CFM that will flow through that duct and lose a tenth of an inch of pressure. Well, that same duct, same 10 inches diameter, only by flex duct, that 0.1 can only move 300 CFM. So there's a reduction of airflow from using a metal pipe to a flex duct of 25% in the case of 10 inch. Now, here's another example that might be used for a main trunk that feeds like a plenum box or a return box or something. In this case, we've dialed this to 18 inches, you see, 15, 16, 17, 18 inch diameter duct, and we've dialed 18 inches diameter duct down here as well. And using the same 0.1, that metal pipe is good for 2000 CFM of air in this top red circle here. 0.1 is good for 2000 CFM. That same duct, that same 18 inch duct, but in flexible duct instead of metal duct, is only good for 1500 cubic feet of air. 1500 CFM, another 25% reduction in flow. Major difference. Last, let's take a look at a seven inch metal duct. Seven inch metal duct, same 0.1, approximately 150, 155 CFM. That seven inch duct in 0.1, more like 115 to 120. Again, that 20, 25% reduction. So the moral of the story here is, if someone were to size your duct system and the ducts feeding different rooms where you may be having difficulty with getting enough air, enough cooling, enough heating, and they used a metal ductulator to size the duct, but ended up installing flexible ductwork, you're gonna have a very different performance because the flexible ductwork cannot handle the full airflow at the same pressure. It's gonna be reduced 20 or 25% minimum which means if you're supposed to get a certain amount of air in the room to cool and you get 25% less, that's gonna be 25% less cooling for that room. So it's really important when you're talking to one of our consultants that you understand we size things using the right calculator for the right material. So if you have flex duct branches, we're gonna use a flex duct calculation to determine your overall system airflow to see if it was sized and if it was installed correctly. Now, one other thing I wanna point out to you here is that there's some other things that go along with uh, flexible duct. There's things called equivalent straight feet or equivalent length. 
So all the air friction losses are based on duct running in a perfectly straight, fully extended direction. Whenever we have to make a bend or a turn or anything, there's an equivalent length. So in the case of this 90 degree elbow here, if we bend our flex 90 degrees and we follow the very careful bending radius instructions for flex duct, which is a whole diameter of radius, if we do that properly, even though that elbow or that bend might be one or two feet of length, it's the equivalent of having 10 feet of extended straight flex duct. If we do an offset, a nice smooth 245 offsets here, where the air has to change directions two times, that's the equivalent of 20 feet of duct laid out straight, perfectly extended straight. So the point is, the more twists and turns, not only is flex duct more restrictive so that less air flows through it, but one of the reasons installers love flex duct is they can bend it and twist it and wrap it around things, which is easy to install, but there's a huge penalty to pay in airflow because of this equivalent length. Even the fitting types that we choose, the boxes have equivalent lengths, the plenums have equivalent lengths, the boots that are used have equivalent lengths. So for example, you can choose a boot like this one here with the box and the round collar on the side. That one box that your register attached to is the equivalent of 25 feet of straight flex duct, whereas a nice squared around transition could be as low as three feet. So you could imagine as you stack up all these different things between possibly using the wrong ductulator material, between not installing it, between not accounting for all these turns and radiuses and their equivalent length, it doesn't take much before your existing flex duct system no longer can deliver the comfort you're looking for and creates all sorts of problems for your system. And that's what we're here to correct. Boom.